today we're going to take a look at a title bar, which is this thing down here at the bottom. This is our dimension drawing, so we'll put our front, top, and right side in here with the ISO, and we'll dimension it. But what's nice about this is that we can get this bottom part to automatically collect a lot of data. So let's go through how to take care of that. First thing we'll need to do is we'll need to get the standard.idw. We'll just pull it up. So we need to do some things here. We need to delete this default border under sheet one. So we're going to right click on it and say delete. We're also going to right click on this ANSI large and hit delete. We'll right click and we'll say edit sheet. We want to make this size A because the default was D here. And if you look, it's 22 inches high by 34 inches wide. So it's a pretty big sheet of paper we don't have. So we're going to go to size A, and that's 8.5 by 11. So that's a standard piece of paper. And we can say that we want it either portrait or we want it landscape. Most of the time we just put, put landscape. So now we're going to expand our drawing resources here. So we hit the plus sign. First thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll click borders. And we'll right click on default border. We're just going to right click on it and say insert drawing border. And what's nice about this is, is we can kind of change this thing up if we want it. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the defaults for now and you can see what it looks like. What's nice about it is it gives us like coordinates like B2, B1, A1, and A2. So we could talk about specific little quadrants if we wanted. And we can even divide it up more if we wanted. We're going to go down to title blocks. And we can expand that if we wanted. But we really just right click on title blocks and say define new title block. So when we do that, you'll notice that the screen just it kind of goes into sketch mode here on us. So I'm going to start. I usually just start with a rectangle. And it, so it doesn't really matter where you put it because it's eventually going to go to the bottom because we told it to earlier. Now, we do want to throw some dimensions down here. The length of this, because we want it to go all the way across the bottom, needs to be 10.24 because that is the distance between this line and this line. So I'll go ahead and hit the check mark. Now you notice that kind of flies off the screen a little bit. But that's okay. Now I'm going to make the height of this thing just one inch. So one inch. Now I'm going to use my line tool and do some work. I know from here to here, I'm just going to put a line down and I'll dimension it. I'll say from here to here needs to also be just one inch. And I'm going to take a line and put it halfway here. And just connect it to the other midpoint. So that should be a half inch on each side. Over here, I'm going to go down like so. And I'm going to make the distance between this line and this line be three. Okay. Next, I'll go ahead and do kind of the same thing on the other end. And I know I want this one to be from here to here. I want that just to be 1.5. And I'm going to go ahead and divide this section right here in half. I happen to know that the distance from here to here is 4.740. So I'm going to type 4.740. Four zero, and just divide it by 2 to make that even. I am going to go ahead and hit finish sketch here just so you can see what happens. It's going to stick that thing right there where we want it. So I hit finish sketch. It's going to ask me, what do you want this title block to be named? Well, you should probably pick your last name. So last name and then put engineering and hit save. Let me show you how this works. If we go to title blocks and we expand it, you can see we have three things here now. This is the one we just created. So I'm going to right click on it and say insert. And there it is. Okay, now let's play like I'm not done. I want to edit that thing. It's not not exactly the way I want it. So I'm going to right click on it and say edit. And now to pull it up and I can fix it up. Now I want it to collect a few things. So I'm going to put some text in here. I'm in sketch mode. Remember that. Here's text. I'm going to come up here and click right there. And I'm going to say, you know what? Put the name here. I am going to use all caps. So that's name. And I'm going to come down here right below it. And I'm going to kind of select that whole little area there. Like that's going to be a text box. Now this is a little different. I want this one to automatically collect. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to say properties model. And then it's going to give me an options over here where it says appearance. I want that to just say author. Now a critical component here is I have to hit this 
this button right here. This will actually add it. So you can see it comes down here. So that is super duper important. We can select these and get these right all day. But until we do that, it's not going to show. So we'll hit OK now. And you can see it's there. Now let's kind of scoot over some. So we'll go over to this next one. And this one's going to be called just drawing. So again, probably should go ahead and just put the all the caps lock. Something like that. And hit OK. Now if I decide that I need to move it around, right now I'm still in, in a different mode, so I can escape and then I can kind of click this and maneuver it around the screen a little bit. Again, though, I'm going to automatically collect something here, so I'm going to select this whole area. And I, I do this because the file names can get big sometimes. So I'm going to go here again and I'm going to say Properties Model again. This time I'm going to go down here to where it says File Name. And that way it will automatically collect it. Now I do need to make sure that I add it, right? So I need to go over here. So one, two, three. And let's go over here to this last one. And we always want to put a date on here. So I'm going to click right in here in the, in the area. And I'll type in date. So that's just a straight up text one. I'm going to go back in here to text again. Kind of come down here. And this is going to be a parameter again, so I'm going to actually go up here and say Properties Model again. And this time I'll go down to Creation Date. I remember to insert it. Okay, and it will automatically collect that date. Now over here, I want you to put the class. Okay, so we'll put class. We can even put class period. Okay, and then below it, what we may do here, instead of doing some kind of uh, where we have to get a prompt every time, we might just type in our actual class name, our actual class period. So maybe we're in third period, so we'd put third period. If we were in seventh period, we'd type seventh here. And that way, it just it's always going to be in there. Now, we will come over here to this box now. And let's click right about in here. And we're going to put scale. And below it, I'll hit text again, and I'm going to come down here. Scale's not this big, so this box doesn't really need to be this big. But scale is in a little bit different spot. So this one is in sheet properties. Note the difference. Sheet properties. And we want it. The very first thing that comes up is initial view scale, and that's what we want. And then we need to make sure we add it. It's almost done with this part. And we've got this one over here. We want to go ahead and collect material on this thing. So we'll put material. And that helps the machinist know what what to go look for uh, to decide if they can build this piece or not. So they're going to say, all right, it's aluminum 6061, so I need to go get that. This happens to be back in the properties model again. And we go in here and we choose material. And then we make sure to insert it or add it. Now we got to remember that if we don't actually assign the part a material, that this will not be able to collect it. It's, it's looking in there to see that. And the last one I want to put in is I'm going to go ahead, because sometimes we have multiple sheets here. So we're going to put page number or sheet number. Okay, so I'll go like this, and then I'm going to come back up here to text again, and I'll just kind of make this box fill up that space. This one is also goes down to sheet properties, and then we'll come up here and we'll say sheet number. Make sure to hit the, the add. Okay, so now that one is set up to automatically collect all kinds of information. Okay, so let me go ahead and hit finish sketch. It says, do I want to save those edits? And I want to say yes there. So you can see what it looks like now. Now, as we put a part in here, it will automatically collect these things. Now, you notice I left a box over here. I want to actually put a logo there for my company. So I'm going to go back up here again under title box. I'm going to right click on that and say edit. Now, I'm going to go up, up here to image. Notice I'm in sketch mode. So I'm going to go to image. And I'm just going to kind of draw a box 
right here where I want that, that image to go. And then I'm going to have to look through, right, and find it. Inventor only likes to deal with BMPs on this, okay? So I'm going to double click it. I already had that BMP made. You see my image is in there, so I hit finish sketch, make sure to save. Okay, and there we go. So from here, just to show you an example of what it would look like, I'm going to go ahead and put a view in here. So I'm just going to find a part that we've uh, we've created. Now notice, as soon as I pull that in, look what happens down here at the bottom. It, it pulls my username from the computer. On this computer, that's what it happens to be. On your class computers, that should pull up your first dot last name, right? And it'll tell you the name of the part. It also tells me the date it was created. Not today's date, but the date it was created. Now you notice it's already got third period set for us. The scale is one to one right now. We could change that so instead of one to one, maybe I decide, you know what? Let's make that two to one. And as soon as I click OK, it'll update that scale for me. So see how it's two to one now. It's got our material in there and it's got our page number. Now the final step here, and we'll talk about uh, how to place views and all that kind of stuff in a little bit later time. But what we want to do is go ahead and save this thing as a template. So we're going to say File, and Save As, and Save Copy as Template. So it's a little bit different than what we've done. So Save Copy as Template. You can see I've already got one saved in there. So I want to name this probably your last name. Make sure up here it says save in en.us. If it doesn't, you need to call me over. We need to make sure it's in that folder. 